This is one of the most interesting sites I think we visited in Germany or Austria. It's the Munich prison, and many opponents here were murdered by guillotine. After the Beer Hall push, Munich was the spiritual heart of Nazism. The White Rose movement was active here, and I really wanted to tell the story of it. Most of the German resistance groups were communists, partly because communists were very active before the war, but a young man named Hans Scholl became disillusioned with Nazism. His sister, who was active in the movement, took a pretty large role in the attention it was given after the war, and for pretty good reason. It's because Hans Scholl started out his life as a Nazi, but he was also gay. He joined the Hitler Youth Movement because he was afraid of communists taking control of Germany. They'd actually already established a communist government in Bremen and another one in Bavaria. So he went on to go to Munich as a sort of political pilgrimage after joining the Hitler Youth. The whole time, though, his parents were very wary of Hitler and of fascism. In Munich, Hans found out that the Nazis had banned homosexuality. Also, he heard about the concentration camps being set up in Nazi-occupied territory. Eventually, he was arrested for being in a gay relationship. He claims he forced himself on the guy, but this was only to prevent his imprisonment. And just a few years ago, they discovered the love letters written between them. Finally, he was sent to the Eastern Front as a Hitler youth medic. He saw massacres and decided he couldn't keep silent anymore. So he used his relationship with a local gay bookstore owner to print propaganda leaflets, calling themselves the White Rose. They promoted nonviolent resistance to the Nazis and talked about the concentration camps. They would overthrow these leaflets at the halls of Munich universities, which were really the spiritual heart of Nazism at the time. This is where all of the radicals were being indoctrinated. They were given a show trial by Roland Freisler of the People's Court. He's famous for killing nearly everyone that ever went through his courtroom. A favorite tactic of his was to make them wear large pants and no belt so that their pants would fall off as he insulted them. Hans' sister, Sophie, showed a lot of courage in this court. She even said to Roland's face, You know just as well as we do that the war is lost. Why are you so cowardly that you won't admit it? They were executed later that day. Their movement can be summed up with this quote from Hans Scholl. He said, It's high time that Christians made up their minds to do something. What are we going to show in the way of resistance as compared to the communists, for instance, when this terror is all over? We'll be standing empty-handed. We will have no answer when we're asked, What did you do about it? His sister was seen scattering the papers, and they were tortured into a confession implicating other White Rose members. Hans Scholl's last words were, Long live freedom as the guillotine came down. His sister had a longer statement. Such a fine, sunny day, and I have to go. What does my death matter, though, if thousands of people are stirred and awakened into action? Safely returned to their base in France, RAF raiders who have just carried out one of the most remarkable feats of the war. These are the men who did the trick, finally giving the lie to Goering's boast that no enemy planes could ever penetrate far into the right. Loading up with thousands of leaflets, they prepare to set out on their daring raid. The plan being to fly over Bohemia and Austria, involving a flight of over 2,000 miles. This would have been a notable effort in peacetime, but to accomplish it successfully over enemy country in wartime, and in spite of the intense cold of the worst winter for years, it's, well, quite an achievement, isn't it? So now Goering and the other Nazis know. 